Hey, it's Jeff at Seedcode. This is the first of a series of videos I'm going to make to walk you through the process of creating a new module in the new Seedcode Complete. We're here on the home screen, and for the most part, these buttons that you see represent the different modules that ship with Seedcode Complete. We've got com contacts, companies, projects, invoices, purchase orders, calendar, inventory, and reports. And most of these buttons, all except the last one, have uh, two parts where uh, the uh, icon itself is a larger button. And if you click on that, uh, we get a new slide panel over here where we can search for uh, records in that module. Um, and a smaller button over here, if we just click directly on a label, we're going to jump to a different layout where we can see more details about that record and any related data. So the first step in creating a new module is going to be to create a new uh, button here on this layout. And again, this last button doesn't have the two parts, so I'm not going to um, use that as my um, as my template. I'm going to copy um, one of these other buttons and then uh, change the elements inside of it um, and have it uh, work with my new module, which I've decided is going to be supplies. So let's switch to the... Um, layout mode and in order to grab this button object here um, since there's many other several elements to it so I'm going to hold down my command key and marquee select up and around completely surround everything that I want and now you see I got some other stuff down here that other button that I don't want so I'm gonna shift command select to deselect those other objects now from here I'm going to um, duplicate those objects and then slide them into this position here. Okay. Um, while I'm at it, I want to make sure the spacing is right. So let me just select this object here and see that the right edge is at 728 and over here we're at 728 points. So that's good. How about the difference in uh, between the uh, between them vertically? Uh, this button, the bottom edge is at 425. This one, the top edge is at 428. That's the difference of three points. So here the bottom edge is 479. This one needs to be at 482, but it's at 479. So I need to scoot that down by three pixels. I'm going to select the whole thing again with my command key and one, two, three, just nudge it down by three pixels. Let's go into browse mode and just see what we have so far. Right? We have a duplicate of the go to inventory button uh, there, and it works the same way. So we need to now we need to change the icon, the graphic, and also the label that's there on the button. Okay, um, so to do that, let's switch to the, let me pull up my layouts. Uh, I'm going to switch to the splash layout because that is where we store the graphics. I'm going to go into layout mode off to the right here, off to the side of the visible part of the layout. This is where we store the graphics that get loaded into a repeating global container field on startup. Okay, the script reads this layout and based on the names that have been given to these objects, um, they get loaded into the, uh, and the order that they appear in, in an associated array. So I hope this isn't getting too confusing, but um, this variable here gets loaded up with the names, the same names without the one underscore and the two underscore um, into an array. And then that's how the script knows what repetition to put that uh, particular graphic in. Um, so like, so what that means is that if I want to add a new icon at the end, I would come over here and add um, another carriage return. And whatever I called it on that layout, I would put it here, minus the one underscore or the two underscore. So let's switch back and um, look and see that uh, the, the black version, which is going to look good on a light colored background, starts with one underscore and the white version starts with two underscore okay and then the name of the icon which is in that array same so as you so you see how that works one contact one company and so forth okay I'm just gonna choose one that's already here I'm gonna choose this um, paperclip icon and uh, the other thing in order to use the right repetition I have to know what position it's in in that global field and these are 1 through 16 so this is number 17 18 19 I need uh, graphic number 19 all right, so that's all I need to know from that layout. Let's just switch back to our home screen. I can go to layout mode, 
Um, and to click to select that icon, I need to marquee around it because there's a button on top of it. Um, but all I have to do is change the repetition to number 19, and you see there's my paper clip. All right, so while I'm here in, um, in layout mode, let's click on this smaller button and look over here and see um, how we are hiding the label um, when it's in the normal state. We're pushing it over uh, by 300. And so that, that's our padding, and so it effectively uh, pushes it out of view, the label, and so it's invisible. So I'm temporarily going to bring that back to zero so I can see my label text there, and I'm going to change that to what I want it to read, okay, and select it again and push it back out to the 300. Now the larger button is a separate object that I can access from over here, and it's got the same thing going on. I'm going to bring that padding to zero, then I'm going to click over here because I, I know there's another object on top of it to the left and change that to supplies as well, then select it again and push it back out to 300. Okay, so that's about it. Let's switch to browse mode and we'll see that that works now. I've got my two buttons here and they both say go to supply, supplies, and we've got my paperclip icon there and it's a, it's a new button and now uh, in the next video, what I'll do is uh, talk about how to change the uh, scripts that are associated with this bu these buttons um, uh, so that you can start building your own new module for Seed Code Complete. That's it for now. Thanks for watching.